Good morning. Hello. Good day. Welcome to Coffee with Dr. Tom. I hope you've got your coffee. I've got mine. Marzi made me an iced coffee this morning. This is day six of our seven-day workshop, and today we're talking about testing. So to bring everyone up to date on where we are today, first let me say thank you so much for joining us. It uh, uh, gives me a great sense of fulfillment to be able to do this work and for all of us here at thedoctor.com. And we read all of your comments and I look at uh, all of the hearts that are flashing on Instagram and, and on Facebook. So thank you all so very much for that. It just it puts a smile on my face and makes us work harder. Uh, uh, we, we just want to do more. Um, so yesterday we talked about the numbers uh, from over the weekend and that the realization was for the first time for me that 25% of all the confirmed cases in the world are in the U.S. It's like, what? A quarter of all of them? Well, today's numbers um, are going up as we expect they would. Now I'm gonna back up so that you can see yesterday there was 278,000 in the US and today it's 368,000 here in the US. And the percentage has gone up a little bit of all of the confirmed cases in the world. This is coming out from Johns Hopkins uh, on a daily basis. They took Sunday off uh, from doing this. Uh, but aside from that, so we're seeing that the percentage of U.S. cases is maintaining and made an up of 1%, one percent, one and a half percent of all the cases in the world. And we think it's still going to get worse. So let's just be prepared for that. And why the U.S.? We've talked about this, that only 12 percent of Americans are metabolically healthy. What does that mean? It means your body's not working quite right. Only 12 percent of us, not quite nine out of 10, are um, our bodies are not working properly. There's some imbalance that likely affects our immune system. One in two of us have diabetes or are pre-diabetic. One in three have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. 75% of Americans are overweight. And we know that more than doubles your risk of having a severe reaction to COVID. 42% of Americans are obese. And we know that more than triples your risk of having a severe reaction to COVID. And in New York City, they're seeing still that um, uh, about 40% of the hospitalizations are younger people between 20 and 40. And it's, we suspect a strong component to the reason why that's happening is because of how we live our lives here in America compared to the rest of the world. Now, the daily new deaths, um, you can see uh, um, this came from medcram.com, which is a great um, information site. I'd recommend everyone that wants the geek information. But on April 5th, uh, the daily deaths uh, uh, in the U.S. was that you, you can see this bar all the way on the right. It actually has gone down a little bit from where it was the day before on April 4th. And the same thing we see in terms of total daily cases, that it's gone down a little bit from the bar that you could see from the day before. And we're hoping that that's a decline, that the trend is declining. We don't know for sure, uh, but it's the first time we've seen a decline. Great to see it. Um, so let's hope that that's going to be the trend and we keep moving in that direction. Um, and once again, we've talked about Finland and why in the Scandinavian countries does Finland have a lower number of people who are having symptoms with COVID, a lower number of people who are dying with COVID, the total deaths in Finland, uh, compared to the other Scandinavian countries. And we talked about there's just over 5 million people in Finland, and there's over 3 million saunas in Finland. So the questions come up, uh, does this thing about heat called hyperthermia, does it really help? And the answer is there's a lot of information that suggests it does. Uh, I'm putting a study in here today. Uh, here's the daily deaths in Finland, which is going down also. And this chart you can see is um, uh, three deaths yesterday uh, in Finland, just three. But the downward trend, once again, hopefully that's going to be the case all over the world. But here's a study that talks about 
immune changes when you do hot, then cold, and then if you add exercise to it. And because of this Finnish uh, phenomenon that we're noticing, the question is, does it really help your immune system? And when I go back and you look at the studies, this study is way back from 1999. Uh, and what did they show? They showed absolutely. Now, the cells that we talk about that are important here for our immune system, remember there's two different immune systems. There's the automatic one called the innate immune system. And then there's the backup called the adaptive, the antibodies, which we're gonna talk about a little later for testing today. Uh, so the innate immune system, the autoresponder, the cells that are most important when dealing with viral exposure are the natural killer cells, which are the amplifiers of inflammation in the body. I remember I talked about garage bands uh, and natural killer cells and then monocytes and both natural killer cells and monocytes increase when you do a sauna and then you go into a cold bath after that. And in Finland, they jump in the lake, right? But it increases. Uh, uh, natural killer cells increase, monocytes increase um, when you do sauna and then cold. So hot, cold. And many of us don't have access to a sauna in terms of the big picture of health. It's a good idea when you can to invest in a sauna. We've got lots of information on our website about that. I think it's the dr.com forward slash sauna if you want to learn more. But for right now, what can you do? And it's something that my mentor, Dr. Goodhart, taught us way back in the 1970s. It's called hot, cold, hot. You're in the shower and you let the hot water hit on your mid, low back area. because That's where your adrenal glands are, the glands that handle the stress of life. And then you reach behind and turn all the way to cold for five seconds. It's like, whoo. Ooh, and then turn it back to hot, hot, cold, hot. Start with hot, end with hot, so you feel comfortable. And that's the poor man's version of getting some of the benefits of sauna therapy, really small poor man's version. There's a fella out there who has just covered the internet, YouTube and Facebook. His name's Wim Hoff, W-N or W-M, Wim, H-O-F-F. And he talks about cold therapy and it really works. So in your future, that's something that you might wanna look at because it strengthens your body. It gives you stronger nerves and stronger immune system. And there are a number of studies that show cold therapy helps to strengthen your immune system. Hot therapy helps to strengthen your immune system and hot cold is even better. And most fins, they do hot, they jump in a lake, then they go back in the sauna again, hot, cold, hot. So you can reproduce that to a minor degree and get a little bit of benefit in your shower. Every time you take a shower, hot to relax under the shower, cold and try to breathe. Don't tighten up your whole body. Try to breathe through it as much as you can. It's the Wim Hof technique, uh, breathing in the cold and then hot again. Uh, so try that. It'll help this much. And remember, we talk about base hits win the ball game. So you want to help your immune system have more effective natural killer cells and more effective monocytes. And one of the mechanisms is this hyperthermia, hypothermia, hot, cold, it, it helps. We'll talk more about diet, nutrition on that also. So my mentor, Dr. Bland has says, now don't forget how we respond to COVID-19 is an indicator of lifestyle. This is a lifestyle disease. And it's the people who have a difficult response to this, whose immune systems can't quite take care of the exposure. They're the ones that have the problems. Now, most of us are exposed to this virus. We're going to be exposed. Most of us are, and hopefully we didn't get sick. We may have had a sore throat for a day or something, a mild fever for a day or so, but now we're fine. And we'll talk about how do you test for immunity to see if that's happened for you. But those that have reactions, those that have to go to the hospital, we know it's because, and the only reason why, is because of their immune system being unable to totally take care of the exposure. Now, this is a drawing that comes from medcram.com, and you can see 
that here's day zero on the left side. This is when you're exposed to the virus. And for those that are going to get symptoms, it takes about five days before you get symptoms. Uh, so if you're getting symptoms, it means that the immune system wasn't capable of dealing with this exposure completely. And it had to call in some reserves, like get a little fever. And you remember from the other day, fevers are good for you up to a point. You wanna let a fever do its job. So if you got a fever though, even a mild one, it means that the monocytes, the natural killer cells, your innate immune system wasn't strong enough to deal with this thing completely because not everybody gets symptoms. But if you do, they usually come within five days. So then about 20% of the people will have to go to the hospital, about 20%. And if people go to the hospital, the only ones that uh, in most places, because the hospital is so overwhelmed, they're being allowed in, are those that are having a difficult time breathing. The rest of them are sent home. So what we see here, and once again, this is from medcram.com, what we see here, there's three different windows of opportunity for treatment. The first one is back here on the left, the purple one, and that's lifestyle and what we're doing with social distancing, washing your hands, all smart things to do, and the concept I've given you every day, base hits win the ball game. And one of the things that I talked about in base hits is focusing on rebuilding your microbiome. And we have lots of information at the doctor.com. If you have a holistic doctor, a functional medicine doctor, an integrative medicine doctor, they've got lots of information on rebuilding microbiomes. So talk to your healthcare practitioners, your health coaches, your nutritionists, your registered dietitians. How do I rebuild my microbiome? And it's not by taking supplements. Taking a supplement is good and helpful and supportive, but it's the foods you eat that determine the diversity and the health of your microbiome. So this drawing, which comes from medcram.com, talks about the three different opportunities we have to help the immune system. On the far left in the purple, lifestyle and how we lived our lives will determine whether or not our immune system is strong enough to handle the virus when we're exposed. I'm sure I've been exposed. I didn't have any symptoms, but I travel so much, I would assume I was exposed. Uh, and so this five-day window, no symptoms, as is true for most of us, didn't have any symptoms. If you had some symptoms, fever for a day, a sore throat, a little bit of a cough, and then it went away, likely you were exposed and your immune system was not quite strong enough to deal with it completely. You know, there's different levels of competence in response. And so, but it kicked in enough and so that you didn't get really sick, which is great, but that's a wake up message. Oh, my immune system probably needs a little attention in the months to come. Okay, what are the little baby steps I can do to help my immune system be even stronger so I don't even get a sore throat or a fever for a day, or my child doesn't get a fever for a day? That would be wise as a takeaway to this current time we're in. And the next category are those that have to go to the hospital. Those people whose symptoms are much more pronounced they're the ones that you have to say, you have to have the realization, hopefully first we, we get through this, but they say, boy, my immune system really needs some help. Don't forget about this. Don't go back to the old way of taking care of your body, thinking that oh, it's gone now, everything's fine. No, there'll be something in the future that we're exposed to. And so you want to say, boy, I really want to make sure I dial down my immune system function. And those are the people that maybe they work with their um, functional medicine doctor, their complementary medicine, integrative medicine doctors, and say, can you measure the, the strength of my immune system right now? And you spend a few dollars and you do tests that are not um, medically necessary, according to insurance companies, because you're not sick right now, but you want to see, am I producing adequate amounts of natural killer cells? Do I have adequate amounts of immunoglobulins to make antibodies. And you'll probably find if you're one of the ones that had to go to the hospital and thank God you were able to go back home, 
you'll probably find that you're going to see some markers of your immune system that's not doing so well. And it's not enough to make you sick every day, but it's not doing so well. So that's a wake up call. It's like, wake up, wake up. Oh, I'm glad I feel better now. Boy, that was a nasty experience. I'm, I'm glad I'm better now. Yes, you're better now, but you don't want to get hit again. There must be something most likely in the foods that you're eating, the environment you live in, in terms of the air, the amount of stress that you're under, there must be something that is draining your immune system. For the vast majority of us who are in that stage where I had to go to the hospital, but I made it through okay, that there's something that's draining your immune system. Once again, that's where information like this comes into play to see, is it Toxic chemicals, my whole talk yesterday about phthalates and heavy metals and pesticides and insecticides uh, or food sensitivities. There has to be something. So th this may be a wake-up call. You got through it okay. You were sent back home. Great. And I need to dial down why this happened to me. And then those that had to be admitted to the hospital, those that had to be admitted to the hospital, the current statistics are showing that those people within 24 hours, they're either going to stabilize or they become life-threatened and they can't breathe. That is happening really quickly. So those immune systems are highly compromised. And there's a lot of research going on right now to identify how do we kick up the natural killer cells? How do we kick up the monocytes? And they're talking about these first few days here when your symptoms are getting worse because it takes seven days after you first get symptoms, about seven days, and there's variances on both ends, but about seven days before you get so sick, you have to go to the hospital. So when you start getting symptoms, is there something that you can do here? Yes, there is. And that's where we've been talking about, about the foods that you select and about the nutrients that can be helpful for you. And you, of course, wanna be talking to your healthcare practitioners if you've got a fever, or if you've got a slight cough and it's not too bad right now, but what are the things I can do to reduce the mucus? What foods produce mucus in my body? I don't wanna be a human Petri dish right now in my head or in my lungs. So that, so, and what are those foods? If you recall, dairy commonly produces mucus. Bananas commonly produce mucus. They're not bad for you necessarily, but they produce mucus. Uh, white potatoes, produce mucus, sugar produces mucus. So if you are in this five day stage where you're starting to get some symptoms, you don't wanna be eating foods that produce more mucus. Now it's a whole nother discussion. Why is it we crave those foods at that time? I'm not gonna talk about that now, but you want to eliminate the foods that produce more congestion for you, mucus and congestion. And you've seen these drawings over the last couple of days that I've done. We know that 20% who develop mild symptoms at day five will progress to having to go to the hospital. And the goal here in this seven day program with you is to reduce that 20% number. Because if you get a few symptoms after day five and you're fine, as you now have heard, all right, I need to look at this in the future and what do I do? But if you get a few symptoms, they get worse and worse and worse and worse. The goal is to reduce that number of people that have to go to the hospital. And so there's two windows here. The first window of day zero to five, when you don't have any symptoms at all. And then day five until day 12, when you're getting some symptoms. And in this window, it's what we've been talking about. It's about lifestyle and the choices you make on a daily basis. Remember inflammation, excessive inflammation weakens your immune system. And the most common trigger of excessive inflammation is what's on the end of your fork. So wake up to what's on the end of your fork and be really kind to yourself. Love yourself right now. Don't put foods in there that you think, yeah, I know I really shouldn't eat any of that. Don't do it right now. Be kind to yourself. Take care of yourself. And this window where we're talking about, as I've mentioned about the Finnish saunas, and we're gonna talk about some nutrients. This is what tomorrow is about. What do I do if I get sick? What do I do if I get some symptoms? And you're gonna be blown away by some of the things we're gonna talk about tomorrow that can be quite effective. Of course, um, this beautiful photo, thank you to Laura Danaher on our team for sending me over this photo. Uh, this is the kind of uh, uh, 
pizza, I guess, that is most healthy for your immune system. Thank you, Laura. It's a beautiful photo. And we've talked about the blue zones and the things that you do long term in terms of developing the lifestyle habits of the people that live the longest, healthiest lives. And this is consistent all over the world. The only one that may not be familiar to you, number two, Hari Hachibu, it means eat 20% less. So that, and it's the, um, our body doesn't produce the hormones to tell the brain that we're full for about 20 minutes after we're actually full. And so if you eat less consciously and wait 20 minutes before you have a second serving, you know, I really don't need that. And it's healthier for you overall. One suggestion is get smaller plates. Instead of 12 inch plates, get nine inch plates and use those. So those kinds of little base hits win the ball game in all of this. So what about testing? So we're at the stage now we're talking about testing. And I have to apologize to you for this because it's not a simple answer. We would love it to be a simple answer. We would just love it to be. But unfortunately, it's not. So I'm, I'm going to give you some basics about this. You want to take a few notes or get the downloads of the slides so that you can look back at this again. And some of this will be familiar to the people that have heard me speak before, but for others, it won't. Mrs. Patient, your immune system is the armed forces in your body. It's there to protect you. There's an army, an air force, a Marines, a Coast Guard, a Navy. We call them IGA, IgG, IgE, IgM, IgD. They're different branches of the armed forces. Now, to give you a little history on this, I'm going to use this as an example because it'll help you to understand what you're up against. Because so many of our healthcare practitioners still think the old paradigms. So this is an example now that doesn't relate directly to this current crisis, but it's an example of how we think about our immune system. If you think there's a food that your child is eating that may not be too good for them, you take them to the allergist. And the allergist does skin prick tests. And on the needle is a little residue of a food. And they prick the skin with that needle. And then they wait to see, does the body react to that? Get a little red welt around there. That's a good test. It came out in the 1950s. Not exaggerating, 70 years ago. And that test is looking at IgE responses. That's the Air Force, IgE, right? And if you have a reaction to the pinprick test, the allergist will say, your child's got a problem with peanuts, or your child's got a problem with tomatoes, or your child's got a problem with wheat. And it's an accurate test, very accurate test. The problem is our doctors have considered for many, many years that if the skin prick test comes back negative to tomatoes, it's okay to eat tomatoes, the test was negative. No, it's not, because you've only looked at the Air Force. What about the Army, IgG? Well, I didn't check the Army. Well, what about the Marines, IgA? You know, we, we know that the, the uh, most accepted test for celiac disease is an IgA test. Well, I don't know. I didn't check IgA. So if the allergist does skin prick tests for wheat and it comes back negative, unfortunately, many doctors will say, you don't have a problem with wheat. And that's not accurate. What is accurate to say, the Air Force doesn't say you have a problem with wheat. Well, what do you mean, Doc? Well, I didn't check IgG or IgA or IgM. Well, why not? Well, because I'm an allergist and I check IgE. And you're left in confusion. It's like, what do I do with that information? It's quite confusing. And I've been talking about this on stage for a number of years with our doctors uh, in our seminars, and it just makes sense. You do not want to just check one branch of the armed forces. And the branches of the armed forces that you test for seeing if your immune system 
is properly responding to um, this virus is IgG, IgM, and IgA. Because some people, and they say different things. They tell us different things. IgM tells us this is a recent exposure because IgM are first responders. They're the first ones on the scene, usually within five days, something like that, five to 10 days, somewhere in there, depends on the responsiveness of your immune system. But IgM is first responders. When there's been a longer term exposure, IgG comes into play. So IgM may be negative because you were exposed three weeks ago and IgG may be positive taking over says, yep, yep, you've got some, you, you were exposed, but you're fine now. IgG is a measure that you were exposed and you now have immunity. You're building up some immunity. When you get a vaccination for dengue fever, let's say you're going to Africa and you want a vaccination, you, know, you, you get the vaccinations for the diseases they have there, they give you an injection of the bug, dengue fever. And you, your immune system says, whoa, what's this? I better fight this. And first you make IgM antibodies and then the IgG antibodies come into play and maybe you'll then make IgA antibodies, the, the Marines. Then the IgM antibodies calm down because IgG is here, they're taking over. So by the time you go to Africa, two to three months later, you're, you're protected because you've got these antibodies in your bloodstream. And if you go back to Africa, 15, 20 years later, you just need a booster shot two weeks before you go. Why? Because you're, you've got memory of making these antibodies already. That's IgG and IgA, it's the memory. And so that you likely, if you get tested now, you likely may have IgM antibodies and IgG antibodies. If you were exposed early in this process, in early January, you may only have IgG antibodies. It's a good thing. It means you've got some immunity now. And there are doctors who are doing research right now to see those that have higher levels of antibodies, now IgG or IgA, they're looking at maybe taking some of their blood and extracting the antibodies to give to people that are really sick because they'll go in there and they'll, they'll, they'll destroy the virus. So they're researching that right now. It's called plasmapheresis. It's a geek term for it, but that's what they're looking at. So you want these antibodies. The question is, what test is your healthcare practitioner have access to? Which lab are they going to be using? Because every lab is different. Some labs are doing IgM testing. That's it, that's all they're doing. Some labs are doing IgG testing. That's all they're doing. Some labs are doing IgG and IgM testing. That's all they're doing. Few labs are doing IgG, IgM, and IgA, but there are some. And I'll tell you who they are. You know, we'll, we'll get to that, but I want to get these big concepts first. Next concept. Let's go back to, I'm going to Africa. So you go in, you get the vaccinations uh, to go to Africa months ahead of time. You get these injections. Your immune, your brain says, whoa, what's this? I better fight this. And you, general. And in your immune system, you've got Army, Air Force, Marine Corps generals sitting around with nothing to do. You, General, you now are General Dengue Fever. You, you're General Measles. You, you're General Yellow Fever. Get on this. And these generals make, build assembly lines. And the assembly lines start producing soldiers against Yellow Fever, Dengue Fever, Measles, whatever the vaccination was. Those soldiers go out in the bloodstream and they destroy all the bug from the injection you got. When all the bug from the injection is gone, general yellow fever says, okay, turn off the assembly line. I don't need more soldiers right now. You really shouldn't have antibodies to general yellow fever in your bloodstream right now. You shouldn't, but general yellow fever is vigilant the rest of his life. 
It's called a memory B cell. If you're ever exposed to yellow fever, you're on a plane, some guy coughs in the air, you breathe in the air and he, he has yellow fever and you breathe it in. General yellow fever senses that and flips the switch. He doesn't have to build the assembly line. It's already built. You just have to flip the switch and you're producing antibodies within one to two days. That memory B cell is your long-term protection, right? That's why if you're going to Africa 20 years later, you need a booster shot two weeks before you go because the, the assembly lines are already built. You just need to wake them up, flip the switch and turn it on again, okay? So right now with the virus that we've been exposed to, we should have these antibodies in our bloodstream now. And you will produce a memory B cell for those antibodies months down the road when there's no longer an exposure and a threat to this. That's the goal. That's the goal that we all want. So first off, in terms of a test, you want IgG, IgM, and IgA. You want all three. And some labs just don't offer it. And the docs, um, uh, uh, they're, they're using the labs that their hospital is using. And the docs don't decide which uh, laboratory is going to service the hospital. Um, that's the administrators that decide that. So it just depends on where you go as to what laboratory you're going to get. So the first concept is you want multiple immunoglobulins. That's the IG, multiple immunoglobulins, IgG, IgM, IgA, as, as, as much as possible. You want all three. If they give you IgG and IgM, okay, that's better than just IgG, and that's better than just IgM. So at least IgG and IgM. IgA is icing on the cake and being thorough. Next concept, what are the antibodies testing against? When you go to Africa, if the preparatory um, vaccination you get is for yellow fever, you're protected against yellow fever. But wait a minute, what about dengue fever? Well, I didn't get a vaccination for dengue fever. Well, are you protected from dengue fever? Well, no, you're not. Well, wait a minute, isn't there dengue fever in Africa? Well, the, the State Department says there is, but, but wait a minute, the vaccination that I'm getting is only for yellow fever. Well, th that's a problem. So in terms of the antibodies to the virus, what are they testing? That's a really important concept that's, I'm sorry, this is geeky, but you need to know this. I don't know any other way of, of doing this. You, you need to know this. And most doctors don't know this. I'm not a virologist. You know, I read reading the studies this week and I'm learning so much. Uh, I think, you know, if, you, if you're looking for antibodies to a virus, okay, that's good. Well, wait a minute. There are different components of the virus that your immune system can focus on and produce antibodies to. For example, a number of labs, I looked at three labs and they're looking at the spike protein, the spike protein. Okay, but other labs are looking at the nucleocapsid protein, not the spike protein. So wait a minute, what does that mean? Well, they're looking at IgG for the nucleocapsid protein, okay? And the other lab is looking for IgG for the spike protein. And another lab is looking at IgG and IgM for nucleocapsid. Or another lab's looking at IgG and IgM for spike. Well, you know, it, it starts to spin in your head as you're trying to make sense of what is a thorough test? What test is most accurate and is thorough? And the most accurate and the most thorough that I have found out there looks at IgG, IgA, and IgM. And it looks at not just one of these components of the virus, but it looks at all four components of the virus. The spike protein, the nucleocapsid protein, the membrane proteins, and that laboratory is Vibrant Wellness. Vibrant America, Vibrant Wellness, same laboratory. So with your healthcare practitioners, if you ask them, 
Doc, can you look into vibrant wellness? And I'd like to get an IgG, IgM, and IgA antibody panel, meaning the protectors are going to protect you long term, to the four different components of the virus. Now, vibrant wellness we've used for a number of years now. They're cutting edge. Uh, Harvard's published a number of papers on them and other institutions, Columbia has published on them, that their, their technology is really something. Can I have your phone for a minute, honey? Uh, I'm, I'm, I just wanna show something. Uh, okay. Um, I call it the 30-30 rule. 30 years ago, it took a 30 by 30 computer, floor, or 30 by 30 room, floor to ceiling computers uh, to generate the computing power of this phone. 30 years ago, we never could have guessed. In 1990, we couldn't have guessed that I'd hold something in my hand that can tell me all of the different information. Mean, I can pull up the air particulate matter in Italy right now or in India. I can pull up any information I want within seconds on our smartphones, right? We never knew that was possible. The same is true in laboratory medicine, that the technology has just leapfrogged, just jaw-dropping the information that the technology now, the most cutting edge technology that I am aware of is called silicone chip technology. And with that, you can look at IgG, IgM, IgA, to hundreds of different things in one blood draw. Now the laboratories will isolate what they're gonna look at. For example, in the wheat test that we use, the most accurate test in the world, it looks at 26 different components of wheat, not just one. Most labs look at one. Some of them look at two components of wheat. Well, this one looks at 26, it's called the wheat zoomer. This laboratory has been working day and night and with my friend, Dr. Wan Chang in Houston, and there are 10 different offices around the country. Dr. Chang is one of them. And what they've done in this last week is they're doing deep nasal swabs. And I'm told you have to go way back and almost get in touch against the brain that a person can't do it to themselves. You gotta really get in there to swab. And then they're doing blood draws. And then they're doing the finger prick tests. And they're comparing all three. And the FDA has given fast track approval status to look at the finger prick test and see if it's as accurate as the other two methods, which are known to be very accurate. And the estimate is within the next week, we will know if that test is as accurate as the blood draw and technically 97 to 99% sensitivity, 98 to 100% specificity for the geeks out there. That means on the money every time. But we'll know within a week, hopefully, if the finger prick test is as accurate as the other methods, which we know are accurate, so that people don't have to go out to a doctor's office and get their blood drawn, that we can send you the test kit at home. You poke your finger, you put a drop on, on the blood, just let it dry, a drop of blood on the card, let it dry, put it in the mail and send it back. You got the results in one to three days because we wanna know, are you producing the antibodies? If you're producing the antibodies to multiple components of the virus, you're pretty safe. As far as we know, you, you've developed immunity. Now, if you're producing the antibodies to one component of the virus, like the spike protein, are you safe? The answer is no. The results that are coming back this week are looking at different markers and seeing that some people are making antibodies to one protein, some people are making antibodies to another. And if you're only testing one and it comes back negative, then you may think I don't have immunity, but if you check the other ones, you do have immunity. So the more components of the virus you can test, the better. And the most comprehensive test right now out there is Vibrant Wellness. They're looking at four different components IgG, IgM, IgA, with 97 to 99% accuracy every single time. So for those of you, you talk to your doctors about this, call your healthcare practitioners or send them a message and say, are you able 
to order the Vibrant Wellness antibody test, IgG, IgM, and IgA. And if not, you can send, you can go to the dr.com forward slash uh, ask, ask, A-S-K, and just let us know. I'm interested in the test. Just say test. That's all we'll need. And we'll accumulate the list and we'll let you know when it's available. Much more important to go to your healthcare practitioner, much more important and work with them. But if they are not able to access the test, because if they work in the hospital, doctors can't make that decision. The hospital makes that decision. And maybe the hospital administrator will. And if enough people ask, they'll look into it and say, oh, this is a really remarkable test. And then they'll offer it at their hospital. So, But some doctors can't make that decision. They're part of the system and they can't do it. So if you don't have access to it, go to the dr.com forward slash ask and just let us know. I'm interested. That's all you have to say. And then we'll get back to you. We'll accumulate the list and we'll get back to you and let you know when the test is available. Hopefully within a week, because this thing is changing most every day. So the, summarize on the status about testing. There are multiple immunoglobulins we have to test for, not just one. IgG and IgM is the more comprehensive labs. IgG, IgM, IgA is the most comprehensive. What components of the virus are they testing? If they're testing one component of the virus and it comes back negative, you may have immunity, but it's to the other components of the virus. So um, I haven't seen any labs that are doing two components. Almost all of them are doing one. Vibrant Wellness is the only one I've seen they're doing four. Because of their silicone chip technology, they can do more. It's game-changing technology. So they're looking at the spike protein S1, the spike protein S2, the receptor binding domain, and the nucleoprotein. So that, sorry, that's geek stuff, but you want to write this down or go back and listen to it again or download the slides afterwards. I'll tell you how to do that so that you can ask, can you do this test to your healthcare practitioner? That's the most comprehensive test that's out there. Any test is better than no test, but you can get false negatives. And I don't know about false positives, depends on the lab, but you can get false negatives if it's not comprehensive. Once again, base hits, win the ball game, keep doing the little things. Your food selection's critically important all day long, every day in what you're eating. The whole blue zone concept of uh, uh, Hari Hachibu and the nine factors that come into play. Uh, Marzi is giving me notes saying, explain that vaccines are only examples. Yes, when we're looking at how our body responds to this, to this um, uh, current virus, the easy way to understand how our immune system works is by understanding the dynamics of vaccines. Vaccines, they give you the bug and an irritant called an adjuvant to wake up the immune system. And then the immune system says, oh, there's a bug here. And then you make antibodies to whatever the vaccine is for. I'm not talking pro-vaccine. I'm not talking anti-vaccine. I'm talking about the mechanism of what your immune system does. Right now, we want that mechanism working really well. First, to make the natural killer cells and to make the monocytes, the innate immune system. And that's all the polyphenols I talked about on day two, how important they are in fruits and vegetables, how important they are in vitamin D, how important it is in vitamin C, how important it is. How those things are really important to support your innate immune system. And now we're talking about the adaptive immune system, the backup. How do we have protection in the future from this virus? It's by IgG, IgA, IgM antibodies to different components of the virus. And of course, like every other day, you are welcome to the transcripts. We're having this all transcribed so you can read it if you want to or send it to your friends. Send them the link also to this. You can rewatch the videos. You can download the slides. You can get the MP3s. I'm giving you the studies that we're talking about. It's all there for you. And it, it's $37 for the whole week. But if you can't afford to pay this, then 
click the button that says scholarship. And all we're asking from you, if you click the button that says scholarship, is that you tell us, how are you going to pay this information forward? You're getting this for free. What are you going to do for free out in the world? How are you going to pay it forward? Really important to us to know that uh, we're moving this along in one way or another. So just share a sentence or two with us on that, and then we're really happy you've got all of this information at your fingertips to share with your friends, your family, and your healthcare practitioners. Thank you all so very much. We will see you tomorrow when we talk about what do I do if I get sick? And thanks again. See you soon.